Butteries. Hi everybody, I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. And this is the Concept Crucible Podcast. And today we're going dark and heavy once again. We're going soul consider, searching. I don't consider this dark or heavy. I think it's dark and heavy because I hate the idea. I love... Okay, no, no. I, f- I have emotional feels. Sure. Like, that's valid. That's real. Yeah. I always feel touched by the loss of innocence, but in a good way. Not, like, the stolen innocence, but, like, when you when you have to move on. So, so to, to follow that with the actual topic of this podcast, no, uh, yeah, today is growing up and growing out. No. And specifically... Um, Growing out of growing out of things mm-hmm. and having to 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 say the goodbye to them and the um, the, I think the importance of endings. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, what is what is the first time. You learned to say goodbye. I think the first time that I meaningfully learned to about saying goodbye was, uh, ending summer camps as a cadet, uh, mm-hmm. because you. So in Army Cadets, with your home Cadet Corps, you're always the same group of people. You're usually in Cadets for about seven years. So yeah. other than people who join partway through or leave, it's the same cohort of people progressing all the way through. Okay. And to a certain degree, summer camps are the same way, at least for the first, say, three years, where you have like a, a beginner two-week, your first sixth week, your next sixth week, and then you do advanced stuff a lot of the time. Uh, so you, there is a little bit of a cohort there, but summer camps are are kids from all across mid and southern Ontario, um, and mm-hmm. so you're not necessarily in the same platoons, and you spend an intense six weeks together. I'm I'm taking like the the middle and and advanced courses um, in this example, so you spend an intense six weeks. Like it's an emotional very experiential you have to really rely on a lot of people and you become you know brothers and sisters or close friends like you feel like a family at that at the end of six weeks when it's time to go home and you always have the mentality that our friendships are going to carry on forever right because (laughs) how many of those people are you actually friends with now exactly in (laughs) like and it's the same like in school you think this is going to go on forever because you spend eight grades or eight or nine grades together and then you hit high school and you had you have a different group of friends and then you like the the lessons that i learned from summer camp helped me transition from public school into high school from high school into undergrad from undergrad into grad school every time that they that those experiences came to an end i knew that there was no illusion in my mind that this is going to go on forever, that when I leave, I'm probably not going to see these people a lot, if ever, again. And that you have to cherish and, and enjoy and, and hold on to those memories because that that's it. Like, there's no more new memories coming. Yeah. And so those summer camps and when I left Army Cadets, that was the first time that I learned about how to say goodbye and what that means. Nice. Yeah, that is powerful and emotional. Uh, mine is actually my first time, like like if we're thinking about the first times we learned how to say goodbye, mine's actually deeply recently, far too recently for a normal grown human. Um, I ended a three-year D&D campaign a couple of years ago, and as stupid as that sounds, um, is the first one that we ever ended, that I ever ended, where I was like, this date will be the last day, the last game. And then we will do something new. And it was great. It was incredible. It was like seven hours long. It was way longer than it needed to be. It was, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> but like, I, I, have, I have lived a life where, where more often than not, I don't end things on my own terms. Um, like as a, as a youth, I got kicked out of school and I have been fired from jobs and things like that. Like there's, there, there was... You know, so you get used to that idea of you have to keep something going until something else ends it because you just have to cling to the thing that you have going. Mm-hmm. And so it was very interesting to end something, something, something that that had gone on for a while in a way that was on our own terms and where where we were ready to go. And that was a really a really fascinating feeling that I that I totally love, and now and now I'm like I came out of that being like let's send that let's send a D and D campaign every week, 
<laughs> why why are why are we doing this for three years? We're gonna do it for like three days and then we're gonna be like, it's over. <laughs> Next thing. But and and since then I've spent a bunch of time thinking about endings and, and how things end and when they end and why. Uh, because I think endings have merit. I think that everything everything deserves an ending. Mm -hmm. It deserves an ending that 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 it warrants. I mean, it deserves an ending that does it justice, whether that's television or jobs or educations or mm -hmm. I mean, in some way like that's kind of what they're trying to do with convocation at universities. Like mm -hmm. it's it's become sort of a weird joke thing. But what like they're trying to give you an ending to this thing that that does your hard work some justice. And I don't think it, I don't think it gets there or succeeds at all. No, but I think that 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 is that is part of that idea and part of that ritual yeah. is to mark is to try and mark that ending. And it seems entirely worthwhile. Like, like I love the notion of endings when they when they happen intentionally, and I like the idea of of, of being intentional about it. Mm -hmm. That's something that uh, I know. Um, you might roll your eyes about the art of manliness. Um, I don't roll my eyes. I know, but there there was an article. Oh, this is this article probably goes back quite a ways. We'll put it in the um, show notes. Yeah, I'll, I'll find it. Uh, but it talks about um, the role of ritualistically marking the passage, rites mm -hmm. of passage. Yeah. And yeah, you know, I, I didn't really think about it. I wanted to skip both convocations. And a lot of times you think about convocation, not you, but like I've thought mm -hmm. about convocations in this kind of, it's something you have to do. I don't want to do it. It's more for my family. I've already got the degree. Um, there's going to be so many people there. I don't want to sit there for two hours. I don't want to sit there while they call out other people's names. It's not me. Did you skip convocation? No, I went to both of them. I was going to say, because it's longer than two hours, man. Yeah, it's three hours, but the actual like procession just goes on forever. Yeah. Um, it's it, But it's, it's funny, since I've graduated, and don't get me wrong, I don't want to go to my convocation again if I ever have another one. <laughs> <laughs> because, because that convocation isn't as meaningful to me as other things, but that idea, and I think, I think maybe that's something that I feel is missing out of my life sometimes, is those ritualistic markers uh, that that give me that rite of passage mm -hmm. you know and the, the, the reason why I say the art of manliness is they talk about the transition from childhood to adulthood and you know there was more historical examples that they give of ritualistically you know young men becoming men or children becoming young men through trials or whatever through their own cultural uh, symbols and signifiers and whatnot and I sometimes look back on my life and yeah, I didn't. I don't feel like I've had a lot of that because you go through primary school, secondary school. I went on to uh, tertiary or post secondary school. Um, I wasn't ready to enter the real world after undergrad, so I decided to try out grad school. Well, mm -hmm. try out, try to get into grad school. Got into grad school. Realized I was a shitty academic, so I finished in three years instead of one, <laughs> and then floundered around a little bit afterwards. Um, I'm starting to feel a little bit more secure because I, I finally have full-time permanent job. I, I finally have those benefits, those things yeah. that I probably should have had coming out. But, um, but yeah, knowing when to move on, knowing when to say goodbye, knowing when something has played out its role and not keeping it on life support, so to speak, is, is kind of important. Yeah, I almost, th I almost find that the... Like the, 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 I think the most common one to think of, and you're right, is that sort of like like childhood to adulthood, you know, marker. But I almost find that that is like the the least useful mm -hmm. one to think of because because it it's the most artificial. It doesn't mm -hmm. it doesn't mean anything. You're not like suddenly I have decided to say goodbye to all things childish. Yeah. Like what? I have composed a list. Mm -hmm. Really? No. Or I have turned eighteen. Therefore, I am now entitled to vote. Yeah. If you've never thought about voting before. So there are some politically engaged youth that are under 18 that probably should be voting. Yeah. And there are plenty it's, of people over 18 who shouldn't be voting. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's like arbitrary, arbitrary boundaries like that are necessary. I mean, yeah. they're arbitrary, but they, they, there need, there needs to be one at some point. But, um, no, it's, but it's, it's that idea of like, like trying to conceptualize 
the notion of childishness and what that means. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody knows a childish adult, and everybody has a sort of definition of of what that person is like, and that ma that makes the that makes you describe them that way. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that it is more interesting to think about the the specific segments that we that we say goodbye to. So like, like you, you mentioned, your your different like sort of levels of schooling, and you you regard those. Um, as as parts of your life that you you close a chapter on. Like I made I, I made the same um, argument with grad school in a previous podcast, almost certainly where it's like I finished my thesis and I have closed that book, mm -hmm. and I have moved on to another one. We launched the album. We have closed the book on that, and mm -hmm. we are now moving forward into the next thing. Mm -hmm. And is that idea of an ending? An ending doesn't just tell you that something is over. Mm -hmm. It tells you that you are finished. Mm -hmm. That you do not have to do this thing forever. That there are other other things. And I mean, it. I I find that being in a position where you think that you're going to do something forever is like tiring. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. You know, like, like I think about it with work sometimes. Every once in a while, I have that like work anxiety thought where you, you feel like you feel it and you're like I don't really want to go and I don't really want to do this and I'm just I'm, but I'm gonna have to do this forever and the answer to that is actually to think about the pieces of my job that I find value in and I'm like you know I'm but I'm 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 I am gonna have to do this forever but I am finishing pieces of it and moving forward and I can I can work with other people on my team to find ways forward mm -hmm. like so in the abstract sure but in the actual like practical here and now or very everything everything ends everything finishes and that to me is deeply valuable like things things that i have ended i mean i am i am as we record this i am 2 months away from ending the next D&D &D campaign mm -hmm. um i am moving out of my apartment and uh, saying goodbye to that uh, I remember when I, when I said goodbye to the university. I went back there maybe three months ago for an event, and uh, I I went to school at University of Waterloo for seven years, and both before and after that, I worked there for a few years, uh, working in the library, working with the faculty association, and. So I spent like a decade of my life mm -hmm. in that place. And I remember going there and thinking, this place doesn't belong to me anymore. It belongs to the people who are here now and the memories that they're making and the experiences that they're having. Like I have closed the book on that part of my life. And it would take it would take an act of God to get me to reopen it. Mm -hmm. I, I have left this place behind and I have I have left it in in the hands of others. I'm like I'm not nostalgic for for university. I'm I've 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 left it in the past. And it seems we, like going back there makes it is a super weird like surreal experience because it's it's like walking around your old house after people other people have been living there mm -hmm. for a few years like you're just like this is mine, but it's definitely not. Mm -hmm. And I, I have both of those feelings. How about you? What have you, what have you said goodbye to? Uh, explicitly with, I'm just going to go back to the army cadets for a second. Mm -hmm. I remember after my last annual inspection where I was the, the chief warrant officer, I was the, the person in charge of the parade. So I remember saying goodbye to the cadet corps that way by just kind of pacing back and forth on the parade square, the, the, the the gymnasium that we used to, to parade on the inside. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, I said goodbye to that. Um, oh, there was there was one that I had. Um, oh, what did I say goodbye to? There was something explicit that I realized that I wasn't, I wasn't necessarily coming back to it. Oh, it's probably going to... It's because I was so enthralled with, with you talking about your experiences that I... I lost, I lost sight of what I had. You're the only person that's ever told me that. I know. Well, I mean, we have a podcast for a reason. Um, 
my thesis a little bit. Yeah. Um, saying goodbye to that because it was such a long, drawn out process of two years. Um, when I moved out of my apartment, um, because it was my first big boy apartment that I lived in on my own, mm-hmm. I, I was saying goodbye to that. Um, campus response team saying yeah. goodbye to that. I mean, I I was in it and then I moved home. Um, so I thought I was done. Then I came back and here's here's like here's an example of. You say goodbye to something, then you come back to it, and you mm-hmm. realize that the second time you go through something, even if the first time was like several years, the second time you go through it, it's not as good. It's not as it's not as it's not as you don't capture that same magic as the first time around. I had a little bit of that with the campus response team when I kind of rejoined after being away because I thought I wasn't going to be on it anymore. I even had it back in high school. Um, I had a writer's craft class where uh, I took it the first time loved it got a great grade wanted to take it again with the same teacher and just the the feeling wasn't the same he 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 was the kind of english teacher that didn't teach the same thing each year Mm -hmm. so he would pick different poems or different short stories so it was a different experience different group of people it just didn't feel the same that magic wasn't there um saying goodbye uh funerals because that very same teacher he died um i think september of last year he died of cancer um, so I found out about it and I went to one of the visitations to say my goodbye. And I'd, I'd written him a letter months before that I was intending to send it. I never ended up sending it. So I polished it up and I put it in an envelope and I gave it to one of his sons. I said, you know, this was, I wanted to let him know what had happened to me because I went to U, UW like he had. Yeah. Um, and I was teaching in, in the college. So I wanted to tell him about that just to say like, you know, this is... Uh, um, I'm not here because of you, but I'm here in part of you kind of deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I gave that to his son, said goodbye, went to a funeral recently, saying goodbye there. Um, so, I mean, there's lots of different things. Yeah, know. I suppose uh, like one of the things we hadn't talked about until you brought up was, was, was funerals, mm-hmm. like the, the, the people that you, you say goodbye to. I think that once you reach a certain age, you have unquestionably had that conversation where... You, where you either know, knowingly or unknowingly, you you have the last conversation you will ever have with someone. Mm-hmm. I have had a couple, and and I ha- I like I haven't I, I haven't ever had one that I regret. Um, but I understand what that's like, and it's it's like I remember standing in a hospital room. Uh, over a, a friend, uh, like a family friend, and, and and knowing knowing that, like the the next time I see him, it will be because he is in a coffin, mm-hmm. and I will be carrying his coffin to his gravesite. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like like like, it is a it is a weird and and stressful thing to think about. But I guess maybe the smaller version of that is pets. Mm-hmm. Like we have pets, knowing that they are mortal and that we will outlive them. That that you know we will have a pet for what five, ten, fifteen years, mm-hmm. but eventually, like their their mortality will catch up with them, mm-hmm. and we we find ways to sort of confront that ending. But funerals are, are yeah, that's that's a re- that's a really heavy thing to think about. Yeah, the funeral I went to recently. Um, speaking back of like rites of passage, but um, ceremonially marking things. Mm-hmm. When a funeral is done right, and I think the one that I, as weird as and dark as it might say, it's like there's a right way to do a funeral and a wrong way. But when it when it appropriately acknowledges the passing and the celebration of life and whatnot it can be very cathartic for Mm -hmm. at least the me not being a family member i can't speak to whether or not it was cathartic for them but for uh, catharsis of me as a person who knew the deceased um you know when when those funerals uh, the the combination of the the, the symbolism and the ritual and the words that are spoken and the, the time you spend together with people, um, it can 
it can really help with that that goodbye or that that closing of the chapter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that is definitely one of those things that 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 cannot be reopened. No. I mean, in the, in the the myriad ways we leave people behind, the the summer camps and and work transitions and mm-hmm. was it the 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 <laughs> um. Hey, let's have coffee sometime is grown-up code for goodbye forever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, we'll meet up sometime. It'll be fine. Yeah. Translation. Yeah. It has been it has been nice knowing you. I will never see you again. Yeah. Except in passing. No. Yeah. I'll send you a Facebook message in a couple of years. Yeah. God, I never do that. I hate that. <laughs> I hate that feeling. <laughs> Like, like if I haven't talked to you in, in two years, I'm going to need a powerful reason to start now. Yeah. Um, that said, it is, it is, it is occasionally interesting to, to, to reopen those as well. Mm-hmm. Oh man. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting to think that, that, I mean, as your life goes on, you will say goodbye to more and more things. I mean, one, and, and. The power of an ending is being in a position to say goodbye rather than having to say goodbye. Yeah. Is is knowing. You know, it's that that that, that adage of, of um treat every conversation like it's your last one. Mm-hmm. And that that notion of, of and, and there, there's a there's a bunch of like weirdness in there in term you know, for, for interpretation, but essentially it's that idea of, of cherish every moment you have. Mm-hmm. Knowing that eventually you will have none. Mm-hmm. Eventually, eventually your time with whatever that thing is or person is will be up. Mm-hmm. And I think the, those those smaller, safer endings are a way of of acknowledging that, but they also give us space to move forward. Mm-hmm. No, it's important to move forward. You don't say goodbye because you're going to stop you know usually it's it's in the context of somehow moving moving on as you as you said like growing up and growing out Mm -hmm. the idea is it's not withering or it's not it's not circling um stuck in the same spot it's the idea of it's time it's time to close in it's time to move on we talked earlier in the, the episode about like tv shows like everybody knows of an example of you know fiction or whatever where you know something has gone on past its shelf life there the the original story arc has clearly ended and it's only back because people don't want it to end yeah you know as opposed to having a good fitting ending where you know everything feels like it's been given its due everyone feels like they've gotten what's the what inappropriate ending so yeah i i love tv shows that end mm-hmm. um that get a that get a chance to 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 finish up it's the same thing i love about D and D is the same thing I love about about like stories need endings. They mm-hmm. can't just go forever, and it's it's vitally important that they don't. Mm-hmm. So speaking of endings, <laughs> in case you've been paying attention, <laughs> we are announcing the end of the podcast. That's right. Which not not today. Yeah. No. Not as you were listening to it. Just smash cut to black. Yeah. Uh, no. Um. This podcast will end uh, at the end of season four, mm-hmm. um, which will be on December eighteenth, mm-hmm. and we might do a couple of uh, episodes after that and release them uh, separately or somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And we will go on to do the next thing. Yeah, I imagine there's a little bit of a mic scratch moment there where it's like, uh, you know, what's coming to an end? Like, so to be clear. Concept Crucible as a podcast, we're gonna be shutting it down. Yes, um, our 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 relationship will endure. Yes, like, our our we we will continue to work together and do stuff and yeah. work with other people. Yeah, but but and there will probably even be other podcasts, but yeah. this particular podcast, which has been a four year exploration of each other and life and our relationships with it and philosophy and scholarship and. Mm-hmm video games and who knows what else mm-hmm. um will be will be coming to a close mm-hmm. and we will have further announcements about what our upcoming projects are yeah um 
in the next couple of months. Yeah. If the I think that's the most important thing if, you know, you're a little sad about the coming to an end part is we're only bringing it to an end really so that we can make space to do new cool stuff. Yes. You know, it's like you can take a podcast on forever. You can try to generate ideas and whatnot, but at some point it's good to to open yourself up to new things. Change the format, change yep. the project, you know, like for example, the the music the, the cover songs have been invigorating for us. We always say that we if we only had time to film, we would film X, Y, Z. Yes. You know, Huck and Jim, X a thing has yeah, been like a joke for literally, a while. Literally X, Y, Z, yeah. Yeah, and it's just simply that we want, there's so many cool things that we would want to try to do that we just need a little bit of extra space for. <laughs> so yeah, we'll have announcements about that coming up. Um, in the meantime, you can find us ask questions on social media, which is in the show notes, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. You can also find us on Patreon, so you can support uh, this podcast and the streams and uh, all of our future endeavors and our present endeavors, I suppose. Mm-hmm. So uh, not for the last time, but but coming up on the last time, I believe we have eight more episodes left. I think so. Uh, I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. And we're signing off. Stay awesome. Let's, I suppose, get this show on the road, as we do. I'm just amazed at how much I can make my mouth move. <laughs> I think it helps with... I think it helps with the visual of the beard. You're a weird person. Yep, you're not the first one to tell me that. <laughs> <laughs>